This quaint winter scene looks like it belongs to a Hallmark greeting card. The tiny footprints in the pure white snow evokes a simpler and innocent time of a bygone era. However, when you look closer at the picture, you see that the footsteps stop at the lake's edge. There are no footprints leading away. This photo is the last image of four-year-old Naomi Delgado of Loveland, Colorado. On January 1st, 2015, Naomi was at the park with her family for soccer practice. She was at the playground next to the field when her father lost sight of her. As he desperately searched the playground, he rushed to the park's pond and saw the worst thing any parent could see. His daughter was floating in the water. He jumped in and immediately pulled her out, all while frantically calling 911. Mr. Delgado performed CPR until the paramedics arrived and Naomi was rushed to the hospital. Sadly, Naomi didn't make it and passed away from hypothermia and drowning. Steven Weber, 39 from Louisiana, wanted his proposal to his girlfriend, Kanisha Antoine, to be special and something that they would never forget. And nothing would be more special for Steven than proposing at the Manta Resort in Tanzania. Unfortunately, it would be remembered for all the wrong reasons. In the photo, Steven has a heartfelt note declaring his love for his girlfriend. The note says, I can't hold my breath long enough to tell you everything I love about you, but everything I love about you, I love more every day. To make that proposal, he rented out their most popular room called the Underwater Room, which is an anchor cabin in the sea. And because the room is described as being for both divers and non-divers, it was perfect for a unique proposal. On September 19, 2019, Stephen jumped into the water with his handwritten note and a ring box outside of the underwater room and pressed the note against the glass. The note was filled with his love and Kanisha nodded yes. She rushed to the deck top waiting for Stephen to resurface, but he never did. Worried, Kanisha tried to reach the resort staff by phone, but wasn't able to reach anyone. Eventually, she was able to flag down a passing boat. The owner found Stephen and performed CPR, but it was unsuccessful. Local authorities who performed the autopsy found a laceration on his head. The theory was that after the proposal, he excitedly swam up but hit his head, became disoriented, and drowned. What should have been the happiest memory for Kanisha Antoine has now become her worst. On November 28, 1979, Air New Zealand Flight 901 was in the air on its way to do a low-flying sweep around McMurdo Sound, a frozen waterway near the Antarctic. This particular flight was a unique one. It was designed as a one-of-a-kind sightseeing experience where passengers would spend the day on an 11-hour round-trip non-stop flight from Auckland to the Antarctic with an experienced guide pointing out the sites and landmarks on the PA system. At around noon, Captain Jim Collins began to bring the plane down to 2,000 feet so the passengers could get a better view. He believed he was on the correct flight path and continued to fly the plane towards the snowy fields in front of him. But this wasn't like any other flight. What Captain Collins failed to realize was that he wasn't headed for ice and snow in the far distance. He had been looking at Mount Erebus, and as the passengers took photos and videos of the view outside, they were inching closer and closer to their deaths. By the time the collision alarms came on, it was far too late for Captain Collins to pull the plane up. Six seconds later, the plane crashed into the mountain. This photo shows the very moment of impact into Mount Erebus from a passenger's point of view. The plane's window is pressed against the snowy mountain while covered in splatters of what appears to be plane fuel. All 257 passengers and crew members died that day. It is considered to be one of the worst aviation disasters in New Zealand history. This photo is like any other selfie a group of friends would take. The three girls are happily smiling near a wooded area, clearly having a good time. But what appears to be a lens flare in the background is actually a freight train headed their way. 
This would be the last image of 13-year-old Savannah Webster and 15-year-olds Kelsey Webster and Issa Ricker. On October 15, 2011 in Spanish Fork, Utah, the three girls had been in the area to take photos. The Webster sisters had just moved to Utah from California six months prior and made fast friends with Issa Ricker. The trio did everything together, including going to camp and singing in choir. And so, it wasn't out of the ordinary for the three to be together to take photos and post them on social media. The friends decided that they would take selfies standing on a railroad track. As they took their photos, Savannah Webster sent a Facebook message that said, Standing right by a train, ah ha ha ha, this is awesome. She posted that right before they took their final photo. The girls stepped off the westbound track because a train was coming and stood right on the eastbound track to take the photo. In the picture, we can see the girls standing right in front of the freight train as it approached. The conductor of the eastbound train, John Anderson, said that he blasted the horn but the girls didn't react. He said that they were in their own little world. He was unable to stop the train and ran all three girls over. It took a quarter of a mile for the train to come to a complete stop. As soon as the train stopped, the crew immediately ran to where the girls laid. Kelsey Webster and Issa Ricker died immediately. It is believed that Kelsey and Essa were hit by both trains. The youngest, Savannah Webster, survived, but she passed away three days later. While this picture looks horrifying, don't worry, the baby survived. This disturbing scene happened in Jinhua in the Xinjiang province in China on May 23, 2013. The 22-year-old mother, who remains unnamed, said that she went to the shared bathroom of her apartment complex after she felt abdominal cramps. It was a fast labor and she gave birth moments after sitting on the toilet. Only the unthinkable happened. As she tried to pull her baby up, he slipped out of her hands and slipped into the sewer pipe. She tried desperately to free him, but wasn't able to reach her newborn. But there was a problem. The young mother had been hiding her pregnancy from her family and no one knew she was pregnant. And so, she told her landlord she heard a baby crying in the toilet and the landlord called the police. For two and a half hours, rescuers tried to free the baby. The rescue became a media sensation as the local reporters broadcasted the entire ordeal. When the rescuers couldn't reach the baby from the toilet, they went to the floor below to locate the pipe. Eventually, the rescuers found the baby and he was stuck in the pipe's L joint with a diameter of about three inches. Fearing that they would hurt the baby if they tried to remove him themselves, they cut the section of pipe and the baby still inside of the pipe was rushed to the hospital. The baby was finally freed when doctors broke the pipe piece by piece. In these photos, you can see how they work slowly but surely to open the pipe and finally reveal the baby. For a moment, the doctors thought the baby died. That was until he gave a loud cry, much to the relief of everyone. The last photo shows the baby, now dubbed Baby 59, in the care of nurses. For authorities and viewers at home, one mystery remained. Who was the baby's mother? Police originally thought that it was a murder attempt and questioned the 22-year-old as she remained on the scene for the entire rescue. The police asked to search her home and she reluctantly agreed. There, they found bloody towels. The 22-year-old had no choice but to tell the truth. She explained that she had been hiding her pregnancy and originally wanted an abortion but was unable to get one. Also, the pregnancy was the result of a one-night stand and the father was denying responsibility. She had decided to keep her baby, but she didn't know how to take care of one. The reason why she didn't originally reveal her identity was because she had felt shame at being a single mother and didn't want her family to find out. In China, there is still a social stigma of having a child out of wedlock, and while contraception and abortions are available, sex education is one of the least taught subjects in school due to teachers not wanting to seem as though they condone premarital sex. And so, 
young people are undereducated about the subject. Thankfully, Baby 59 only suffered a few bruises and abrasions. On May 30th, 2013, he was released to his grandparents, who agreed to help his mother raise him. Thank you for watching. So, which photo did you find most disturbing? Let us know in the comments. Please like and subscribe, and remember to stay safe this Halloween.